Let's turn to publicism, the evidence weighting policy that says public ev evidence should get the most weight when it comes to religious beliefs. So publicism does very well in helping people who disagree about religion find common ground. Because bias about religion is mostly found in private evidence, publicism minimizes the influence of bias because it minimizes the influence of, of private evidence. This means that two disagreeing parties will have to use mainly evidence on which the other one can also agree. And because of this, publicism doesn't give you the opportunity to epistemically discredit the other person simply because she disagrees. Because any discrediting beliefs belong to your private evidence. This is a really good result as far as agreement is concerned. How about the truth aspect of resolution? Can publicism also push both people in the direction of a true belief? So publicism tends in exactly the opposite direction to privatism here. It's radically progressive, whereas I called privatism elitist. Publicism starts everybody off with epistemic resources that are roughly on a par. The evidence uh, that both parties are at liberty to sign up to. The result is that although the parties are more likely to agree, they are less likely to agree on what's true. Instead, they're more likely to agree on something like agnosticism, or the belief that the evidence is inconclusive. Why? Because the advantage of publicism is also its drawback. Public evidence is neutral of religious content, but because of this, it's probably too neutral to decide the question of religious beliefs either way. This might surprise some people who think that there are sound arguments for the existence or non-existence of God which rely on public evidence premises. For the existence of God, there are the ontological arguments, teleological arguments, and cosmological arguments. And against the existence of God, there are the arguments from suffering, from divine hiddenness, and from religious diversity. But that's just the problem. There are so many good arguments on both sides. And many of these arguments are highly technical. For example, the ontological argument hinges on a claim about which system of modal logic is the best for reasoning about transcendent reality? That's pretty complex. And even the argument from suffering, which you would think is pretty simple, relies on controversial claims about reasons which God might or might not have, which are unfathomable to us mortals. So it's hard to see how an argument relying on such controversial matters can really justify belief, rather than just provisional acceptance as a working hypothesis. And if the arguments don't justify belief, then they, of course, don't justify true belief. At best, we'll get agreement about what degree of uncertainty we should have um, given highly controversial evidence. But publicism is a lot better than privatism for the person who starts off with a false belief because of unreliable biases. So privatism said it was okay for this person to have a false belief. But publicism moves her towards agnosticism instead, and this is at least a move away from a falsehood, even if it's not entirely to a truth. But what about the person who starts off with a true belief because of roughly reliable biases? So in one respect, pu publicism is bad for this person, because his confidence is pushed away from a truth and towards agnosticism. But in another respect, it's not so bad after all, because at least he'll be pushed away from false positive beliefs too. So publicism doesn't promote the true belief envisioned by the resolution constraint, but it does have a silver lining for both parties. Still, it would be nice if we could have a view that gets us agreement and true belief at the same time. Let's see how egalitarianism does.